This is pretty unbelievable because Russian friendly fire destroyed its own infantry and completely collapsed one of defense. At the same time, Ukrainians were able to liberate a key city in the east while destroying completely the entire Russian brigade. And finally, it looks like that Putin is seriously preparing his next purge and Kadyrov already allegedly is in coma. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors, it's Drushan Dude and today I will share with you another fact about myself, so stay tuned. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh. So, courtesy of Adrian who sent me this funny picture where Putin is kinda meeting Kim Chen in and he arrives in his armored limousine with tires on the roof. Because, I mean, you remember, Russians were using tires to protect their planes, I mean, so why Putin wouldn't want to protect his own car? Obviously, this is a Photoshop. Or is it? But the main question, so I want you to let me down in the comments, do you think it will work to protect against Ukrainian drones? And if you are just like many other common sense people think that tires are completely useless in this case, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel to join the army of the Russian dude. You can also follow me on Instagram, the weekend is coming, just to see how I live outside of YouTube, the link is down below. And here is the quick fact about myself. So one of the main reasons why I created this channel is to give you guys 12 to 15 minute summaries of daily events, which otherwise will take you hours to go through by yourself. But what if I told you that you can get exactly the same thing with books and podcasts? What if instead of reading a book for hours, days or maybe even weeks, you can just extract the main ideas and key points in 15 minutes or less? And this became possible thanks to Blinkist. Blinkist gives you key ideas of the book which you can go through and if you are interested in any particular topic you can tap on it and expand the details. And most importantly, you can just listen to Blinkist anywhere you want while driving, exercising, doing housework or just walking in the park. The possibilities are endless. And if you really liked it, you can always read the actual book later. Blinkist has more than 6500 titles in 27 different categories and currently I'm listening to Putin's People by Catherine Belton, which explains how Putin rose to power and what he did to keep it for more than 20 years. And thanks to this app, I was able to go over two decades of modern Russian history in only 37 minutes of concisely summarized major events. Such as, for example, Putin's time in the KGB, the oligarchy, how Putin exploited terrorism to bolster his image, and obviously why Russia had to invade Ukraine. I don't want to spoil for you every single detail of this book, but you just have to read it yourself. And this is the perfect opportunity for me to tell you about Blinkist spaces, where you will be able to join my own private room, the Russian Dude Investors. Here you will be able to read or listen to the same blinks as me, including this Putin's People by Catherine Belton. And the best part about it is that you don't even need a premium subscription for this. All you need is to look for a personal invitation from me down below, that's it. Or even better, you can start your very own 7 days free trial and then you will get 25% off Blinkist annual premium membership. All you need to do is to use my link down in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you so much Blinkist for sponsoring this video and now back to the program. And so yes, now let's talk about Putin who looks like continues his purge and Kadyrov who is in pretty bad health condition and then we'll talk about the south of Ukraine and east of the country where the entire Russian brigade has been recently destroyed. And so yes, first of all, speaking about the Putin's purge, if you remember this uh, general Sergei Surovikin, who was kinda assisting Prigozhin in his armed mutiny back in June, well apparently right now he is sent to Algeria to represent uh, the Ministry of Defense of Russia, allegedly. And just like Prigozhin before his notorious crash, Surovikin will be kinda taking care of Russian things in Africa, once again exactly what supposedly Prigozhin was needed to do. And then Prigozhin one day started flying back to Russia and then we all know what happened. And to say that this does not sound suspicious is basically to say nothing. 
But then we even have some news about one of the best friends of Putin, the president of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov. And according to sources close to Ramzan Kadyrov, they mention that Kadyrov's health is so bad at this point, he might even be in coma. Because pretty much, yes, since the beginning of this war, whenever in the beginning Kadyrov was very loyal to Putin and was sending his Chechen soldiers, which later kinda stopped and not too many Chechens were able to hear about. And then Kadyrov suddenly started to be very bloated. Every single time we see him, he was becoming bigger and bigger, and people were assuming that this was just some kind of kidney problems. And well, looks like that the situation deteriorated so fast and so bad that right now he disappeared from the public eye completely. And just once again, please make your own assumptions down below in the comments. But the ridiculously infuriating news from the Russian government do not end here. For example, according to Andrei Kartapolov, who just last week was saying that Russian soldiers, they need rotation, we will be approximately rotating 200,000 soldiers. Right now he said exactly the opposite, he said that those existing Russian soldiers in Ukraine, they will not be rotated and they will have to finish war while still fighting in Ukraine, no matter how long it takes. And this is exactly the thing I've been telling you guys all the time, is that whenever such people like Kartapov, they say one thing, exactly the opposite will happen in the near future. Well, here is your another confirmation. And ultimately, according to another extremely controversial Russian government representative Viktor Sobolev, he said that the number of diseases which will make you ineligible to be summoned into the Russian army should decrease. <laughs> because the Russian army needs way more new soldiers and uh, pretty much at this point many people can avoid going to the army even though their diseases are not life-threatening. And so, in response to the question of Viktor Sobolev, we need more people, who are we going to send to Ukraine? My response to him is, what about you, government representatives? What about your children? Don't you think that they can serve too and their condition is not life-threatening? Well, okay, I guess, but never mind. So now, let's go to the south of Ukraine where the Russian Black Sea fleet is continues to be humiliated and then I'll give you a very interesting update from the east. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, the most intense fights at this very moment are happening in the western Zaporozhye region. Next we have the claim by Ukrainians fighting along the front lines and they mention that they were able to destroy a large heavy mortar firing position of Russians located to the north of Kamenka Dniprovska. And speaking about Kherson region, according to the local Ukrainian authorities, a mandatory evacuation for families with children has been ordered from this city specifically close to Dnipro river due to constant shelling by Russians. And speaking about the Russian attacks, in the last 24 hours, all 17 Russian Shahid drones were intercepted by Ukrainian air defense. But the main event of the last couple of days is obviously the humiliation of the Russian Black Sea fleet. So, for example, first of all, according to the British intelligence report, they confirmed that the Russian landing ship Minsk and the Russian submarine Rostov-on-Don, which were stationed in Sevastopol as a result of Ukrainian attacks a couple of days ago, are now totally unusable and are suffering severe damages, which will most likely put, him, put them out of use for for next several months or maybe even years. In addition to that, Ukrainians also reported that they sent their naval drone Sea Baby against another Russian Black Sea fleet vessel called Samum. And even though Ukrainians reported that they were able to damage some Russian ships in the Black Sea, according to Russians, and they shared with us this picture, we can see this above mentioned Samum ship and we do not see much damages. But, I mean, it is the position from the Russian propaganda, so you can never believe them the first time you hear something. Maybe this is the picture from before. Let's see. And well, these are the conditions in the south of Ukraine. Now, as promised, let me give you a similar quick update from the east. But first of all, let's make a quick stop in Samara, the city in Russia. And as you can see from this video, a local factory allegedly producing bearings and also reportedly some 
military equipment or at least parts of them, as you can see, <laughs> again spontaneously got caught on fire. And as we go back to Ukraine and refer once again to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians and Ukrainians continue their combat activities along Kupiansk, Svate, Kriminna front line. Then we also have this video from the Eastern front lines, where Ukrainian 30th assault brigade is completely obliterating the positions of Russians, using mainly drones and heavy military vehicles. The full video as always is on my Patreon. Next we have a video by Ukrainian soldiers fighting in Klishivka and according to them they said that they were able to liberate this settlement, but according to the general staff of Ukraine it is not true just yet. At this very moment it is only a partial success of Ukrainians in Klishivka. But don't worry, the liberation is coming. But another key city in the east is now indeed fully liberated and it is confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine and the city I'm talking about is Andreevka. And during one of the most recent Ukrainian raids they were able to destroy the entire 72nd Brigade of Russians who were defending Klishivka, only leaving just a few survivors. In addition to that, several high-ranking military officials of Russians were also destroyed along with a lot of military equipment. And the importance of this city is that it will allow Ukrainians to also start approaching Klishivka from the south with the subsequent visit from Ukrainians towards Bakhmut. So this is pretty much just a one step closer towards the ultimate liberation of Bakhmut. Ukrainians even shared with us this video where they launched a drone with the attached loudspeaker and started flying above Andreevka, urging those Russians who are still hiding and not willing to surrender to actually give up their arms, because they are getting surrounded and there is no way they will get out of there unharmed. Ukrainians gave those Russians still hiding in Klishivka 10 minutes to make the decision and the future destiny of those Russian soldiers as of right now is unknown. And as we take a look at this map, we can see that indeed Ukrainians were able to fully liberate Andreevka. But ok, just a last couple of words from the east of Ukraine and then we'll quickly talk about the massive friendly fire by Russians, which eliminated a lot of its own soldiers and even breached their defenses. And so first of all, according to Ukrainians, they were able to destroy a Russian armored vehicle along with the assault group located to the east of Nevelske. And just overall, Ukrainians were able to destroy 5 artillery units, 2 ammunition depots, 1 command post, 2 anti-aircraft air defense systems and 10 concentration of forces of Russians in the last 24 hours alone. And so yes, now let's briefly talk about this massive friendly fire by Russians, which apparently happened in June of this year, but this event only came to the public eye recently. And so what I'm talking about here is that this incident happened allegedly in Zaporozhye front lines, where Russians were trying to kinda hold their positions against advancing Ukrainians, and then those Russians behind them, allegedly next to second line of defense, they started launching artillery against their own forces. And whenever those Russians on the first line of defense, they started saying, cease fire, who are you destroying, it's us, stop fire right now. The Russians in the second line of defense, they even started using multiple launch rocket systems. I know they were either ignoring them, or they did not hear them, or the communication was not clear. Or maybe there was an order from above, as it always happens in Russia, to eliminate those traitors or something like this, because they saw that the first line of defense is already collapsing, so I mean, why let them escape? I know this is just the assumptions, my own very assumptions, but this is exactly what happened, and this video is confirming that this is actually what happened. And suspiciously enough, this is approximately the same timeline when Ukrainians started actually breaching the first line of defense of Russians in the Zaporozhye region, which basically once again allows me to assume that Russians themselves destroyed their own first line of defense for whatever reason. I mean, I'm not complaining, it helped Ukrainians in the end, but this just once again is another crazy thing about the Russian military. 
the full uncensored video of this incident, along with my fully uncensored episodes, as always will be available on my Patreon, link is down below and there's still one week of free access. And to make things even worse, if you remember from my previous video, at this very moment Russians are heavily concentrating on the third line of defense, which basically means they're also kinda assuming that the second line of defense will not hold Ukrainians for long, which means that Ukrainians will breach it most likely very soon, and if you don't want to miss it, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much Blinkist for sponsoring this video, please make sure to check my links down below if you want to try this app for yourself, thank you so much patrons for your support and see you on Tuesday.